Hello, friends, and welcome to Boston.com's Cocktail Club. I'm Jackson Cannon, and soon I'll be joined by Patty Hernandez of Stillwater in Boston, Massachusetts. Tonight, we're making drinks with Irish whiskey, catching up on the restaurant and bar community, and of course, sharing some tips the pros use to make great drinks at home. When you registered, if you clicked through to Gordon's Wine and Spirits and purchased the Irish whiskey cocktail kit, well, then you have all the ingredients that you need. Profits from these kits go to Off Their Plate. And this is a great charity that buys meals from restaurants that need the business and distributes them to frontline workers and others in need. We have a great playlist of local music by the team at Hereby in Cambridge. And all the while, of course, we're taking your questions from the chat. The ingredients you'll need, Irish whiskey. We are very lucky Tullamore Dew is sponsoring us tonight. So I've got a bottle of their fine flagship whiskey. To make the uh, whiskey sour that we're gonna make, you'll need lemon juice, uh, simple syrup, a little one-to-one -one sugar, optional egg white if you wanna go kind of Boston style, and an orange for garnish. For the mule, in addition to Irish whiskey, you'll need lemon juice, uh, your favorite ginger beer, and I like a little lime for garnish on that one. Uh, we're just gonna use cubed ice, the kind that we get out of these real simple kind of one-by-one um, flexible ice trays. And um, for glassware, you know, the mule mug is traditional for uh, when we're doing the mule, but a rocks glass will work if you don't have one and rocks glass for the whiskey sour and a cocktail glass if you want to be the rare person who enjoys to have that drink straight up instead of on the rocks. Other equipment, you're going to want a Boston shaker or a 10 on 10 shaker for this one. Um, and for strainer, I highly recommend the Hawthorne strainer. Um, if you go the egg white route, because you're going to want to throttle back and get all that frothy goodness out of your gear. Um, you need to make a little juice. I use this uh, juicer to squeeze just two lemons to get, uh, to get a jump on things. Um, bar spoon. Of course, if you don't have a bar spoon, when we get to swizzling up the, uh, the, the first step in the mule, you can always use a, a dinner knife for that gig works great. Or um, I got a lot of these kicking around in the drawer, some chopsticks works. Other things I like to have around tong or tweezers to move my garnish around a bit. I've got a cutting board and a knife and a little plate to help me also move that stuff around. For measuring, I've got my jigger set that we use in the bar. Um, you know, this is two ounces over one ounce and three quarters over a half. Those four measures allow me to like go pretty quickly in the bar building different compound amounts of different recipes. Uh, at home though, there's a very accurate tool if you don't have jiggers handy. This is a tablespoon. It's half an ounce. Anytime a recipe calls for two ounces, that's four tablespoons. Calls for a half ounce, that's one tablespoon. It's pretty easy, highly accurate, a little slower than we'd use in the bar, um, but a great tool if that's what you have at home. I think that is what we're going to need. Did I mention ginger beer? I don't think I did. Have your favorite handy for when we get to that mule. All right, so Patty Hernandez started her restaurant career in 2009 as a host at TGI Fridays in Everett, Mass. She credits that renowned training program with getting her off to a good start as she worked towards a coveted position on the bar. During stints at high volume bars in Boston's Back Bay, Patty was smitten by that neighborhood and was also taken by the way a bartender gets to interact with their community. Dedicating herself to the craft at Hopewell Bar and Kitchen earned her an exciting opportunity on the opening team at Alcove at Lovejoy Wharf. She's now bar manager at Stillwater where she's created the inviting bar programs to complement Chef Sarah Wade's elevated comfort cuisine for this already beloved neighborhood favorite. You can support her directly by hitting the tip jar. Her Venmo is at Patricia Hernandez 08. She is a talented bartender, a whiskey enthusiast. Welcome, Patty. Hi, everybody. Uh, great Hopefully to have you can you. hear Thanks me okay. For, we can hear you great and we can see you great. Thanks for doing this from the bar, which is open, which is awesome. That's right. Thanks for having me. Um, so if you have to break away at any time to do a little business or mask up to head down where everybody is, I understand. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> we'll, we'll be patient. So we can support the restaurant how? We can come in. You can dine in if you're comfortable doing that. Um, you know, on days like today where it's really nice and warm out we're happy to open the patio and you know we're hoping for more warmer days throughout this month and in april but um yeah 
you can always order online as well. We're on um, third party apps as well. Grubhub, Uber Eats, DoorDash. Um, but it's always nice to see, you know, faces walk through the door, so. Right, well, it's getting closer. In the meantime, can we get cocktails to go from you? You sure can. Um, we were really happy when that passed way back when. So we've got, you know, great to go containers and uh, we're happy to sell wine and beer as well. Every little bit counts. That's awesome. Well, I'm getting a little thirsty. Shall we make a drink together? I, I would love to. So I want to make this whiskey sour um, and I'm going to do the version with egg white. So, um, you know, just a, like a quick word, folks, this is a totally optional ingredient. We didn't put it in the kit because we just sort of didn't want to test the science of those little single egg <laughs> containers. Um, but uh, it's, uh, it's a classic. The whiskey sour is a drink that stretches back in different iterations, hundreds of years now. Um, and at some point there became this like trick of throwing a little red wine in it to call it a New York sour and using an egg white to call it a Boston sour. So I'm gonna do that style and I'm gonna do it just live right out of an egg, just kind of the way you would if you were separating egg whites to make a nice little meringue. I'm just gonna pull that. I'm actually gonna save that yolk, it has a lot of nutritional value. I don't wanna just throw it away. Um, and now I'm gonna build my, my drink kind of right over that. I'm gonna do three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. And three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup. It's just a one-to-one -one sugar and water. And this forms the platform here for our delightful variation with Irish whiskey, which um, is, you know, just a little leaner and spicier and maltier than bourbon, um, which makes a great whiskey sour as well. Uh, but this is really, really fun in this presentation. I'm gonna do a full two ounces or four tablespoons if that's how you're doing it. And then I'm gonna super quick do this, you know, not particularly controversial, aptly named dry shake. I'm just gonna get these <laughs> ingredients together a little bit. Was that fair to say, Patty, right? I, oh, it's, People. you know, I'm happy that you the took on the... All right. I was gonna say, I was, I'm happy you took on the, the egg white uh, for tonight's episode. <laughs> right, well, you know, the argument rages, you know, to dry shake or not to dry shake, should I put a spring in it like I was making whipped cream? I mean, you can just see what I did is, I just kind of made sort of one kind of fluid thing, got a little bit ahead of what I'm gonna do when I pulverize this thing uh, with ice. Oh, I can smell that fine whiskey right now already. It's welling up throwing my ice in my glass to get a little chill going there putting uh as much as will kind of fit in there four nice one by one cubes yeah, i draw the right. line at the reverse dry shake but the dry shake the straight dry shake i think has purpose so let's get into it um now both with the non-egg white version patty's got there and the egg white version i've got here this is a drink you want to give a proper rigorous shake to you really want to get some air into it uh, get it chilled down get it well mixed until your shakers are kind of frosted over and then pour over a little fresh ice And of course, looking at the chat, I see some concern about the, the raw quality of this. It, uh, for some people, is a concern. If you're really in a category avoiding any kind of like raw food, like a fine oyster or tartare, something like that, you have a reason to do that. Yes, you should avoid eggs and your drinks in that case. For the rest of us, I mean, this is about, this is probably safer than scrambled eggs, right? We've got the alcohol and the citrus really in there, curing just the egg white. Um, we've washed our hands. Um, you know, we should be feeling pretty comfortable with that. I'm going to do a little slice of orange patty. What are you going to garnish with? I'm going to do the same. I'm uh, going to also use a little cherry, make a little orange cherry flag over here. So just to show um, our friends, you know, I've taken the end off of my orange and I'm going to come down here. 
and make what we call a half moon. That's sort of the, the, the building block for a flag or a fan. Um, and you know, just by dragging it down like that, I get this nice um, regular, very symmetrical looking. And I'm gonna go right in there, just a bit of color, a little something to snack on later when that absorbs all those fine flavors. All right. Here we have Boston style Irish whiskey version of a whiskey sour. All right. Cheers. Cheers. I like the flag there. Yeah, gives it some color and a little bit more of a snack, like you said. <laughs> I, you know, stumbled into a little hornet's nest with some friends of mine talking about which whiskey makes the best sour. This is incredible to me. It, it's got that leanness and that little bit of spice like rye does, but it's like malty, almost like a, a whiff of Geneva got into it somehow or something, you know, like a... Mm. It's, uh, it's certainly easy to, to drink. And I think with, um, you know, the addition of lemon juice and yours with the egg white, it's just a good combination and a tasty beverage for sure. Got anything on the menu that kind of uh, these days that's derivative of the iconic whiskey sour? At the moment, no, but you know, we're, we're uh, always changing things up with the season. So what better time than now than to put something like this on the menu, enjoy on the patio or, you know, by these gorgeous big windows over here. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's such a, uh, the drink has been around so long because it pleases such a wide range of people, you know, and it's like, for me, this was always like a little bit of a, you know, hey, what do you make with uh, Japanese whiskey? Hey, what do you make with Irish whiskey? What do you, and like, you just, you start at the beginning is what you do, you know, right. and you make a sour and, and it, and it really kind of shows the character and properties of each whiskey in sort of a different way. It's really, really kind of fun and exciting. Hey, I'm taking a, a couple of fun questions. Uh, one of them is what's your favorite menu on the Stillwater menu right now? I'm, I'm sorry. You love that when, guests ask, when, when guests ask you what your favorite cocktail on your menu is right now oh i i do love that question um i generally like to ask you know what their preference of spirit is but um right now i've i've really um grown to love the gin blossom cocktail we've got on the menu which is a a play on a vesper and uh it's, we use um a flavored vodka a floral it's light um that's definitely one of one of my favorites, it's super easy to drink and it's it's really tasty. That's fun. Yeah. Hey, so when somebody asks for their drinks to be a little more tart, do you, do you mind like popping up the citrus a little bit or do you roll back the sugar? What's your, what's your way of dealing with that? I think I would, uh, you know, jazz up the uh, citrus for, for more of a tart flavor profile. That's a question from one of our friends out there. That's exactly how you do it. Just ask them to, to tell them you like tart and right. you, you're not afraid of a little extra citrus. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we're getting a bunch of questions from the chat that are like some of the advanced questions that we took that are kind of more along uh, the avenue of what is Irish whiskey? How is it different from these American whiskeys we love? We are really lucky that our sponsor, Tullamore Dew, tonight has provided uh, Jillian Murphy, their brand ambassador, uh, to chime in with us and give us just a couple minutes background on the category and the brand. Welcome, Jillian. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for having me. I am tuning in. I'm here from Chicago, so it's great to see you guys. It's good to see you. We're going to be right back to make a mule after you've uh, told us a little bit about the category and the line. Of course. Cheers. Well, guys, tonight's sponsor is Tullamore Dew Irish Whiskey. It is the original triple blended Irish whiskey a blend of all three styles of whiskey. So we've got grain whiskey for sweetness, malt whiskey for fruitiness, and pot still whiskey for that iconic Irish whiskey spice. Tolly is also triple distilled and it's triple cast matured. So it's gonna have a great depth of flavor in there. Um, I like to drink my neat because I'm a purist, but these cocktails that Jackson and Patty are making this evening are making my mouth water, I'm not gonna lie. So I would definitely be a fan of one of those too. Um, saw some questions out there about the main differences between Scottish whiskey and Irish whiskey, and essentially it's where it's from and how it's made. 
Typically, Scottish whiskey is single malt, whereas Irish whiskey tends to um, favor a blend, and they're both aged for about three years. Now, because St. Patrick's Day is right around the corner, it's next week, can you believe it? I thought I would tune you guys out with a little toast and a little thank you to you all tuning in from home. So if you'll virtually raise your glass with me, I'll be imagining you doing it. We will cheer it too. If Tolly was the ocean and I was a duck, I'd swim my way down and I'd drink my way up. But Tolly's not an ocean and I'm not a duck, so raise your glass and let's drink this all up. Slauncha. Oh, that's awesome, Jillian. Thank you so very much. Hey, one quick question I saw from the chat. What's the do stand for before you go? Oh, so the do in Tullamore do stands for the initials of one of the original founders of the distillery, Daniel Edmund Williams. So it's not the do in the grass in the morning. If you look closely, there is little um, punctuation marks between the letters. Outstanding. Well, thank you so very much. Thank you, Jackson. Thanks, Patty. Thank you. Cheers. Well, that was fun. That was fun. I wanted to drink through the line with her. If we had like 45 more minutes, I'd love to do that. Do that yeah. first light she's got going in the kitchen there. Yeah, I know, definitely. Uh, since, <laughs> since we do it, do you want to take us through building a, um, an Irish mule cocktail? I'd love to. I'd love to. Um, so provided in your kits, if you have them, um, is the very nice Tell Mordu, um, pop, well, it's not copper, it's silver, but mug. <laughs> And uh, so what you'll need is, again, tell them more do, whiskey, your lemon juice, and your favorite ginger beer. Um, so we're gonna start with uh, half an ounce of the lemon juice. And we're just gonna build it right in our mugs. Um, since this drink doesn't require shaking, we're just kind of building on the ingredients. Um, you can just build it right in your mug or glass, um, you know, whichever you have in front of you. Um, so we've just put the half ounce of lemon juice in our cup. Now we're gonna put two ounces of Telemordu right in your mug. Make sure I get all the way up there, two ounces. And I'm just gonna add some ice um, just to get the chilling process going. All right. I'm going to take my bar spoon and stir up these great ingredients so that they're getting to know each other in our mug here. But you don't want to um, fill all the way up with ice just yet because we haven't added our uh, ginger beer in. So once you're done stirring it up a little bit, take your ginger beer. And I'm going to fill it up want a good amount of ginger beer in there you know I think it's certainly one of the stars of, of this drink obviously alongside the whiskey um, so I just filled mine up to about three quarters of the cup here I'm sorry if I'm going fast <laughs> um, and then I'm just yeah no, add... so from, I always think of that as sort of four to six ounces um, yeah that with yeah. this one leaning a little bit more towards the the six ounces, you know, um, sure. with this yep. particular build, so. And I think if you're you, using these um, little... sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I was saying, if you're using these little seven and a half ounce cans, it leaves just a little extra to kind of sip on or, or add if you like, you know? Right. Yeah. I was, um, I was going to say it's, um, up to your personal preference. If you like more ginger beer, obviously you can add more if you've don't want as much you can add less it's your your personal preference um so we've put our ginger beer in we've finished off this drink here we just have to garnish um and i've got some lime wheels here i started a cup keeping but it, i'm gonna <laughs> keeping it gonna wheel keeping it wheel keeping it wheel um, i love that <laughs> so if you just you know take a take a lime you can just cut right from the ends there and make these pretty little wheels. Just put it right on top, makes the drink look pretty. And you've got the lime essence just to top off the rest of the drink there. I think it, you know, pretty standard uh, 
whiskey mule. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm sorry. Slancha, <laughs> um, Patty, slancha. So thanks. Yeah, cheers. Yeah, that's kind of fun. You know, like most of the, when you're reaching for a mule, you're thinking of that vodka mule, Moscow mule, as it were. And, uh, and you're thinking of how the ginger and the lime and the vodka all go. And when you use rum, you're off, often <clears throat> thinking like a, some kind of dark and stormy with lime. And I just find the lemon, like the way it plays with the uh, light multi qualities, qualities of the Tully do that we just used. Um, but then with that lime garnish, <clears throat> it's sort of a neat trick of using both in different ways. The lemon's playing politely inside the drink and the lime is still telling your nose, hey, <laughs> absolutely, it's time, you know? Yeah, cool. yeah, totally. No, I agree. I think the lemon, uh, the use of lemon juice in, in this variation of the Moscow Mule is um, just pairs really well with with whiskey in general uh, versus you know the standard lime juice ingredients. Um, people asking brands of ginger beer we prefer. I'd say let's expand that a little bit. When's the have you had any um, homemade ginger beers you like? Brands you prefer? What do you like to use there at Stillwater? Um, so we have just uh, Goslings back here. Um, you know, I think it's a standard, very um, approachable ginger beer. Um, I personally haven't tried any of the spicier homemade style ginger beers, but I know they're super popular and um, it's, it's just a neat uh, ingredient. Ginger beer just, you know, it, it can be spicy, it can be refreshing, it's, it's pretty versatile. But it's funny too, it's like all of the brands, when you're tasting ginger beer, it gets really a kind of a weird process, right? Cause you're thinking, I mean, you're using goblins, goblins or Barrett's, like you're making dark and stormies. Like right. that stuff was made for that drink. Yep. And when you start getting into something like kind of regardable and a little more interesting, it might not play in, in a certain drink that, that well. So wherever you land, you end up kind of like the recipes you make sort of either have to bend to it or cause you can't, as much as I'd love to, you can't like open with like four different ginger beers, one that you use in each yeah, cocktail that exactly. you like better, you know? So. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, okay, here's a good one. Here's a game we'll have to follow up on later in the year. Um, one of our esteemed guests wants to know how many sours and mules does Patty think she'll be making this patio season? <laughs> Um, I mean, I hope a lot, honestly, I, I'm up for the challenge. I hope that, you know, that means that we're busy and slowly getting back to normal out here. <laughs> what do you feel about people subbing ginger ale into uh, the mule if they don't have access to ginger beer? Um, I think it's, it's definitely a understandable switch up if you have to. I think it's just going to make it a little bit sweeter. So maybe uh, you, you know, turn up the citrus so you can kind of balance out the sweetness of ginger ale and to make it a little more comparable to ginger beer. Never tried it, but I bet a half a slice of jal jalapeno muddled into the lime juice Ooh. right before you built it would kind Absolutely. of bring you back to sure. Iceland, you know? So Yeah, sure. Uh, uh i'll take this one if i wanted to, i like bitters in my cocktails this is the reverse right people are asking can i take bitters out of this cocktail what bitters would i use in this one i gotta say it i think peychaud's this is a really fruity light malty fun thing and i'd love that burst of seville orange and coriander that peychaud's would bring um i think like an orange bitters would be sort of like you know all, a little redundant to what's happening mm -hmm. um sure yep and ango ango might might be a little strong, you know? So that's, uh, let's see. Oh, some ardent fever tree ginger beer followers <laughs> want their voices heard. So yes, we'll, we'll let some, the rest of you know that some people are dedicated to the fever tree <laughs> ginger beers. They are very high quality, wonderful products. They are very good, yes. Um, <laughs> Uh, here's one that's a little bit, um, I'm going to kick the answer down the road just a little bit. They're asking about Manhattan variations with Irish whiskey and in a moment oh. of foreshadowing, you'll have to wait for next week. <laughs> we'll cover a Manhattan version of a Manhattan. 
Um, that sounds and yummy. one other general question for friends of theirs that have missed tonight, where can people watch this again? Um, so they can maybe slow it down when I'm making that whiskey sour and not speeding too fast by. Uh, and so they can try and make it again. We get these out sometime over the next couple of days. You can find them on YouTube and on the boston.com event Facebook page. Why do they call it a mule? That's a good question. Um, from what I, I was like, oh gosh, um, from what I remember, um, it, the the original mug had a, a bull on it, and I think that's how it kind of. You're 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 on the hunt. Yeah, the original <laughs> was a, it was marketing. It's one of those drinks that isn't born out of any kind of a longer thought uh, relationship with the ingredients. Uh, Smir uh, Smirnoff had the Moscow Mule was their logo. They put it on these mugs. They promoted the mule as a drink. And so it's a 20th century drink that doesn't really have roots in the old, old days where you know daisies and sours and things have uh, certain ingredient rules. This one came about right. from that. So all the variations mm -hmm. that come after should have ginger beer, um, but there's no rules. There's only stories to tell and good drinks exactly. to be had, so. Exactly. Um, okay. My chat's frozen, Patty. Can you see? Uh -oh. Can you see any of the other great questions coming in? Um, not in the. Let's see. They were popping up before, but now they seem to have stopped. <laughs> uh oh. Oh. Tip jar. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, tell that. us just a little bit for folks who haven't had a chance to visit Stillwater yet. Before we go, tell us just a little bit more about the bar and restaurant there. Yeah, Stillwater is um, named after chef owner Sarah Wade's hometown, Stillwater, Oklahoma. Um, so she tries to bring a lot of that Southern comfort right here to Boston. And, um, you know, we've got a lot of great homey, she likes to call them warm and fuzzy meals, uh, things like pork mac and cheese, you know, a really great fried chicken dish. Um, and I just try to use the tools I have, um, you know, the, the products that we're able to get to enhance those meals and just to make everyone feel good when you walk in here and like you're, you know, going to an old friend's house just to have some good drinks and some good food. Well, that's awesome. Hey, it's been really great getting to make a couple of drinks with you, Patty. Thanks much, so much, much Jackson. I really appreciate it. Been that's here. all the time Thank we're going to so have. Much. That's all the time we're going to have tonight. My pleasure. Um, hey, join us next week on a different day on Wednesday uh, for St. Patrick's Day. We'll be joined by the legendary Patrick Sullivan. And um, when you register, click through to Gordon's Wine and Spirits, pick up the St. Patrick's Day cocktail kit. You'll be supporting off their plate and getting everything you need for next Wednesday's edition of Boston.com Cocktail Club. Thanks to Jillian for joining us. Thank you, Patty, very, very much. Thank Thanks you so much for having there. me. Cheers, friends. Cheers. Thank you. Mm-hmm.